Hey, almost every insurance agent I know struggles with objections, specifically what to do and how to improve your closing ability. So I'm gonna talk through several different things, okay? I always talk about uh, my specific appointment process, the warm up, fact find, present and close, and then the cool down, okay? I always talk through those different things. I'm gonna talk through a few different things today, okay? So we've got tons of other videos on that specific appointment process. First, I wanna talk through really three areas that a lot of insurance agents can improve at specifically, okay? These, this is kind of, these are interweaven inside of the actual presentation, the actual appointment, okay? The first one is KLT, no, like, trust. A lot of insurance agents get better at warming up, building rapport, right? Building rapport, finding common ground with a prospect. Because what, what happens is a lot of salespeople, they get to where, they get to where they interrogate people instead of just conversate, right? Instead of just having a conversation. Most people will buy from people that they know, like, and trust. People that they enjoy doing business with, someone that they trust, someone they have common ground with, someone that's actually spent time building rapport. I just jumped on a Zoom with one of my salespeople just recently, and I jumped on the Zoom, and I spent about three minutes with a random lady that watches our YouTube videos. Okay, super nice chick. And I asked her after about three minutes, I said, what have you noticed from me, because we were selling our sales training, I said, what do you notice from me in these last three minutes? She said three things, okay? And it got my attention, which is why we thought about doing this video, number one, okay? She said three things. She said, you focused on building rapport. She's like, you asked about me. You cared about me. You didn't talk about yourself. Most people have a tendency to talk about themselves. Okay, she said, you were very engaging. Right, you you weren't boring. You, you she also said you were you were sitting you sat forward, closer to the camera. If you're doing a Zoom, if you're ever selling presentations through Zoom, building rapport, being engaging, and sitting forward. Some of the different techniques. We're gonna shoot another video here in the near future specifically on how to sell through Zoom. Okay, but when it comes to a presentation, I don't care if it's Zoom or in person, you gotta focus on the person, the person on the on the other end of the Zoom, on the other other end of the video, uh, the other side of the living room. You gotta focus on building rapport with them, building some common ground. Most people want to get in and make the sell. You cannot make the sell if you do not build some rapport with them, if you don't build some common ground with them, if you don't focus on them know, liking, and trusting you and just having a human conversation. If you'll focus on having a human conversation, you'll do better. My salespeople are making calls, right? Every single day to set up free demos of our new CA sales system. It's got 400 modules, quizzes, it's for individuals and teams, unbelievable sales training platform for agents. And when they're making those calls, I'm like, you guys are asking them a bazillion questions. It's like you're interrogating them. They're gonna feel like they need to put their defenses up, like, dude, what is going on here? This person just asked me a million questions. You need to have a human, natural conversation and most people forget that, right? Focus on the other person, focus on building rapport. The second piece is, is most people aren't engaging, right? They're, they're, not, they're not focused, they're not in the moment, and they're not trying to improve engagement in the conversation. And then just sitting forward, right? So this is a trick, right? When you're in the middle of a sales presentation, if someone starts sitting back and moving away from you or leaning back in their chair or whatever, they're not engaged anymore. When they start sitting forward, when they start leaning up, they are leaning into what you're saying. They're liking what they're hearing and they're ready to move forward, right? And you gotta take advantage of that. You gotta be able to pick up on those cues, right? There's a lot of psychology in sales and most people miss those things, okay? So the first piece was no like, and trust, okay? The second piece is finding the pain point. Finding the pain point, right? Or isolating the problem. Okay, finding the pain point or isolating the problem. Why do they need your help? Why will they be doing business with you today? What keeps them up at night? Right, for agents, a lot of agents struggle with, with being able to get, get close business and sell products and be able to, right? That's a pain point, making calls. Maybe you suck on the phone, maybe you're not great at closing. Right, what, what are your prospects thinking? Maybe when, you, when, when you're selling them life insurance, Right, maybe they had the death in the family last year, but you don't know that because you didn't ask the right questions. That's where asking the right questions can come in. To, can come in, asking the right questions. Being focused on, and it's not always, right? What most people miss, most people say, 
what do you want to solve by doing this today, right? Great question, but a lot of times what I've learned is if I find common ground and I focus on building rapport and I get the, them talking, when people talk, they share things. When I get people talking, they end up sharing this with me and then I don't even have to ask, right? One of, the, one of my favorite questions to ask is what got you thinking about this, right? Also, another favorite question of mine is, 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 is what's one thing that got you to look at this, got you to look into this. What was one thing that really prompted your response, right? And, 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 you know, and, and they're gonna end up sharing that with you. I prefer though, and I end up making sales easier and better when they actually tell me versus me having to ask. But you have to, once, once you can find some common ground, they know I can trust you, then you can move into the actual pain point, isolate their problem, right? Because then, then if you can find common ground and you can figure out what their pain point is, right? Why they want to buy from you, what makes sense, what the purpose is, what the problem is, then what you'll learn, what you'll learn is once you actually get really good at figuring this out, most people, they stop and they move on, right? Here's an example. One of my salespeople were on the phone last week and the person said, I struggle with objections. One of my salespeople moved on. And said, oh great, yeah, so, so how long have you been in the business? And I'm like, dude, the person just admitted that they struggle with objections. How long have you been struggling with objections? Why do you not like objections? What is the biggest objection that you struggle with? They're like, well, I don't know. Well, is it not interested? Is it I'm broke? Is it I don't have any money? Is it I'm busy? Is it I want you to call me back? Like, what are some of the things you struggle with, right? What I mean by that is you have to go, you have to dive deeper into it. Get them to talk about it. Get them to live it. I know people when they sell long-term care insurance, they take the husband, they put him on the floor, and they say, okay, now, Miss Betty, Joe's on the floor. He can't move, right? He needs help. I want you to go pick him up, take him to the shower, wash him off, take him to the, to, 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 take him to the room, set him on the bed, and, and, and get him dressed, and then get him to the car. They're going to be like, you know, I can't do that. Well, that's why you need long-term care insurance, right? Whether it's nursing home, home health care, uh, assisted living facility. That, that's a real life example of what agents do when they're trying to sell that type of insurance, right? Same thing, same thing we said for any type of insurance, right? That's where facts tell, stories sell. That's where you gotta tell stories. That's where, but most people forget that they need to dive deeper into the actual problem or the pain point. I find it out and then I talk about it and I get them to talk. Okay, and, and I go deeper into the problem to where they don't have any choice but to solve the pain. But they don't have any choice but to solve the problem. Okay, most people don't go deep. Most people, they hear it and they just move on, right? I'm telling you, slow down, ask some additional questions, dive deeper into what the actual pain point or the, or the problem is, okay? The third piece, third piece of this, after building rapport and figuring out the pain point is offering a solution. This is where a lot of people struggle too, by the way. Okay, they, they, some people are good at this. Some people are pretty good at this. Some people are okay at this. Normally they're not great at all three or they struggle with one, two, or maybe they struggle with all of them. I don't know. And I would love to know in comments below. Do you struggle more with building rapport? Do you struggle more with finding the, the pain point of why they're gonna do business with you today? Or do you struggle with how to offer the actual solution to them? Once, once you've got common ground and you know the problem, the sol offering the solution becomes easier, okay? Because you can, write, you, you, you can literally put something in front of them that solves their problem, that, that, is, that, 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 that makes perfect sense for them to move forward, and, 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 you know, and, and you're giving them your professional opinion. And then what are you doing? You're assuming and asking that they are going to be doing this today. Most people forget to, most people, once they get to the end, they don't assume they're gonna do it. If you don't assume they're gonna do it, they're never gonna do it, right? If you don't ask them to do it, they're never gonna do it. Here's what I want you to focus on. Here's what I want you to take away from this video, okay? Is that, yes, you have an important sales process that we talk about a lot. But inside of the sales process, there's other minor pieces that aren't so minor that involve building rapport. When you sell a prospect, do they know, like, and trust you? If they don't, that's a problem, okay? Do you know 
the reason why you're sitting in their house? Do you know the reason why you're on the phone with them? Do you know the reason why you're on Zoom with them? Okay, because if you don't know, I can't offer a solution to solve the pain if I don't know the problem. Okay, I just personally can't, right? And then once you get really good at this and this, this becomes easier. Don't complicate this. Just say, right, we've had a, I've, we've got along phenomenally well. Based on the, the problems that you're wanting to solve and based on what you're wanting to do, I recommend that we do this and that we put it into action immediately. Now, here's the next steps to get started with this today. And then explain the next steps and assume they're gonna do it with you, okay? So focus on these three things and I promise you, the sales piece, the presentation piece, will get a heck of a lot easier. If you love this and you're like, dude, I want a whole team of people doing this, seven secrets on building a, scaling a sales team. It's right there, click on that, I'll see you then. All right, all right, all right, it is five o'clock. Welcome to seven secrets to scaling a superstar sales team. Super excited to be here tonight on Tuesday evening. Appreciate you guys signing up. I can guarantee you 